Hello. We're back in statistics. We're discussing descriptive statistics. And I wanted to go over a couple of topics in Chapter 3. The first topic we'll go over is individual data and some of the statistics. And then in group data, I want to go over the calculation for the median because that's probably one of the most difficult calculations or concepts you'll encounter this semester. So first of all, I want to go over to the DOCAM, which is, thank you. Okay, remember, a little review, a parameter is calculated from a population, a statistic is calculated from a sample. Now I'm going to give you five values. And th these five values are not on your PowerPoint. It's a different example because I just want to uh, continue with the uh, descriptive statistics. Okay, so we have five values. Let's say the weight of a box of cereal, 80, 84, 82, 85, and 82 again. Now, to calculate the mean, I want to emphasize that you need to use your calculator for these calculations. I know you can stick five data points in and get the mean, but what's important is you use the statistical functions on your calculator because you cannot uh, calculate standard deviation and variance without those, without your calculator in the statistical mode. So if you use the statistical mode, I'm going to give you a second. You can put this on pause while you set your calc clear your data, set your calculator for one variable data, and input these five data points. When you do input these five data points, the mean of my sample is 82.6. Okay? The median, how do we calculate the median? We take these five data points and we arrange them from least to greatest. And it's in a, a good habit to write the locator points above it. These are your locator points. And these are your actual data points. Now, to locate it, it's the middle data point, in this case, three. Your median is 82, okay, the middle data point. Your mode, your synonym for mode is most frequent. So there's, in this case, it's pretty easy because there's only one data point that occurs twice, and that's 82. It occurred here and here. We can, with our data, have two modes. Um, in this, in our class, in Introductory to Statistics, you, the furthest will go is two-mode or a bimodal uh, material. Uh, when, if you take any statistics later on, upper level or graduate work, you can have many more modes. But right now, we're only going to deal with two. So our mean is 82.6, our median 82, and our mode is 82. Well, these three numbers are nearly the same. What does that tell us? It tells us that our data is symmetrical. Okay? Symmetrical data is very important. Throughout this semester, about 80% of our statistical uh, trials will be on symmetrical data. So those are the three measures of central tendencies. With this database, I'd like to go over dispersion. How much does the data vary from the center data point? Range. Range is the most common measure of dispersion because everybody understands it. I don't care if you're a statistician or a lawyer or a CEO or an accountant or a criminal justice major. You understand range. It's the max minus the min, 85 minus 80, which is a range of five. Okay, your standard deviation, you should, you should f pull it off of your calculator. Now, your standard deviation is either sigma or S. Sigma 
is for a population, and S is if we're using a sample. Well, this was a sample of five boxes of cereal. So in this case, S, and your calculator's notation is S sub X, it was 1.95. So find that on your calculator. It should, you should find it in your statistical functions. Now to find your variance, you just square it. It would be 1.95 squared or 3.8. You need to understand the relationship between standard deviation and variance. If I give you the standard deviation of 2, you know your variance is going to be 4. If I give you a variance of 36, you know your standard deviation is going to be 6. The last measure of dispersion is coefficient of variance. This is not in your textbook. It is in my PowerPoint presentation. But it's something that typical in the business industry you use. You, you normally do apply to compare two sets of data. In my example, I'm only going to use one. If I give it to you on the exam, you will only compare one. It's standard deviation divided by the mean times 100. So in this example, it's 1.95 divided by the mean, which is 82.6, times 100, and our CV is 2.36. OK? The next thing I'd like to go over, if you and you might want to pause this if you uh, pause my presentation. Um, but this is also in Chapter 3, is finding the meaning of group data. Here's an example of group data. We've lost what the individual data points are. In other words, we know there's eight data points, and eight shirts were sold between $15 and $18. We know 23 shirts were sold between $18 and $21. And we know 17 shirts were t sold between $21 and $24. But we don't know the individual data points, OK? I would like you to pause the uh, video and calculate the mean for group data. You will have to find the midpoint. And your answer is 20.06. So I hope you did get that after you pause it. Now we're going to find the median of the group data. And it's an estimate because we've lost the integrity or we've lost the individual data points. OK. The first thing I want you to do is calculate the cumulative frequencies. Copy over the first 8. 8 plus 23 is 31. 8 plus 23 plus 17 is 48 which it should correspond to your sample size. OK. Find the median data pointer. Again, that formula is n plus 1 divided by 2. For, whoops, 48 plus 1 divided by 2. Or a median data pointer is 24.5. What does that mean? Our 24.5 data point is our median. Where does that fall? That's the locator point, remember. That's not our median. Very often people give me on the test this as the median. It's not the median. Our first eight data points are in this first class. Then up to our 31st data points are in this class. So our 24.5 data point is going to fall into this class. Okay, because it's somewhere between our ninth and our 31st data point. Okay, so the group it's going to fall into is 18 to 21. So we write, we're going to have 18 plus something, and I'm going to write it nice and big here for you, 18 plus something. Well, what is that plus something? This first data point is the median pointer. Our median pointer is 24.5 minus the previous class. Well, this is the current class, so our previous class is 8, minus 8. 
8, and this is 8. The current class is 31. 31 minus the previous class, which is 8 again. And don't forget to multiply it by the interval. The interval is the max minus the min. So in this case, 21 minus 18 or 3. So we put 3 here. When we do this calculation, we have 16.5 over 23 times 3, 18 plus 2.15, and we got 20.15 is our median. Okay? If you were in my face-to-face -face class, oops, let's show you all the data here. If, if you were in my face-to-face -face class, Every problem you should be asking yourself, does the answer make sense? Okay? If our mean's about 20.06, our median's 20.15, and it falls somewhere in the middle here, yes, that answer does make sense. Okay? It does fall in the middle of that class. So this is the conclusion of the, to the topics that I'd like to go over in Chapter 3. I have one more video um, I'll do in Chapter 4 module.